To the love, Southern California radio icon is the newest star of internet radio, live and interactive. Here's Mark Germain, heard exclusively on TalkRadio1.com. 8 o'clock in Los Angeles, this is TalkRadio1.com, and I am Mark Germain. Broadcasting live every weeknight from 8 to 10 p.m. Pacific, 11 to 1 Eastern. Coming up on tonight's show, the Gossip Mom will have the latest celebrity gossip that's coming up in just a few minutes. And uh, also on tonight's show, Luke Ford from LukeFord.net. Luke Ford is a blogger. He is famous for two things, his Spartan lifestyle and turning gossip into news. And we welcome Luke Ford to Talk Radio 1. Hello, Luke. Hi, Mark. How are you? I was uh, reading something about you today. I was actually doing some research. I found out you and I share the same birthday. May 28th? Yes, but I'm 67. You're 66, so you're a year older than me. Wow. <laughs> Do you believe there's any uh, credibility in astrology? Not at all. Okay. Do you? I'm agnostic, but tend to be skeptical. Well, you think... I find it amusing. I mean, if you just think about it, though, that the idea that the stars and the planets might be in a certain way when people are born... I mean, there were a lot of people that were born on Hitler's birthday, but it doesn't mean that they become or have shared characteristics or traits of Adolf Hitler. Right. Yeah, it doesn't make any sense. <laughs> so then why are you agnostic on it? Uh, because there are, there are a lot of things like that in, in life that it's just easy to be agnostic. <laughs> uh, things that I don't understand that, <clears throat> that are harmless and that, uh, uh, I mean, for instance, I'm, I'm friends with this woman who writes um, true crime novels, Aphrodite Jones, and uh, she, she seems to write in, an, in not novels, but uh, true life of, uh, crime. And she seems to write that when someone dies in a room or is murdered in a room, that they leave some sort of presence or aura. And that rationally doesn't make any sense to me, but um, I'm, I guess, again, I'm agnostic. They're skeptical. So. Well, this has actually come up on the show. In fact, I think we were talking about this last week. Would you live in a house where someone was murdered? And my answer is, if the house is a bargain, you bet I'll live there. I won't bother yeah. me a bit. I mean, I wouldn't want to live in a high crime neighborhood, but if it was a random crime or if it was a, you know, a husband killed his wife and he's now in prison for life, would I live in OJ Simpson? First of all, would I live in OJ Simpson's house which has since been raised? But would I have lived there? You bet. If I could get a good deal on a place in uh in Brentwood, I'm there. Uh so I I don't believe that spirits inhabit the places where I mean, Everywhere death has taken place. I'm sure the soil that you're standing on at one time, you know, a, a Tyrannosaurus Rex killed a, you know, a Triceratops, right? Right, right. <laughs> you, you don't think there's any validity to the supernatural? Not at all. No, I'm I'm way too rational for all that. Which I'm I'm glad that we're having this conversation. It's an interesting way for us to get into something that I know um, is. Is a big part of your life. You converted to Judaism 15 years ago. Correct. Um, and it is a big part of my life. Yeah. Uh, you're Orthodox. Yes. And you you keep kosher. Yes. And um, what's interesting is uh, I was born the son of Jewish parents, but my parents were not religious. We had a Christmas tree at my house. That's how religious uh, Jews we were. But we were proud of being Jewish, and if you ask me to fill out a form and ask me what religion I am, I would say that I am Jewish by ethnicity, not by faith. I don't practice right. the Jewish faith. Um, but in the eyes of rabbis, for example, especially Orthodox rabbis, I'm more Jewish than you are, but you've done much more to convert to Judaism. You've done much more. In one month of your conversion, you did more than I've ever done in my life. Yet, just because my mother is Jewish, I, I'm, I'm considered full Jew. Yeah, well, I'm joining a tribe. So all tribes have their idiosyncrasies and their, their borders and barriers to entry. And, uh, I mean, that's, that's the way it goes. Uh, I grew up a wasp, a uh, white Anglo-Saxon Protestant. And uh, becoming Jewish has given me much more sympathy for the the tribal view of life, which which before seemed to me really anachronistic and outdated and primitive. Well, as someone who's done the conversion, uh, I know, not having done it, how difficult it is. 
Uh, Jews don't proselytize. Jews don't really want converts. In fact, Jews go out of their way to make it difficult for people like you to become Jewish. And I always wonder, what is it that drives you to want to do something that, it's like the old Woody Allen joke, I wouldn't want to be a member of a group that would have me as a member. Why, 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 are you, why did you work so hard to be involved in, in a religion that didn't really want you? <laughs> uh, I, find that, I found that attractive in, in a perverse way, uh, that, that they weren't out there proselytizing. I was raised a Seventh-day Adventist who were very heavy proselytizers, so I actually had more respect for, for religion that, w- that wasn't proselytizing me and didn't say I had to become Jewish to be saved. And uh, then personally, I was very personally moved by Dennis Prager, uh, the, the talk show host and mm-hmm. author, uh, I used to have a lot of arguments with him on his radio show, and uh, I exchanged correspondence with him, and so I was very personally touched by his his example. And uh, I just believe it's true. <laughs> I believe that that it uh, contains divine truth, and uh, and it works for me. I was just uh, beginning a new uh, therapy uh, regime tonight, and uh, I was telling the the, the therapist that uh, for an, if you just go by entirely non-religious uh, reasons, my conversion to Judaism is the single best decision I've ever made because it's such a intellectually exciting and uh, fulfilling way of life, even if you don't believe in God. I do believe in God, but just looking at it from a rational, secular human perspective, it's been such a profound ride. Um, h- how is it that you, I mean, did you explore other religions before you explore Judaism? For example, who knows, maybe Scientology has the answers for you, or Buddhism, or Hinduism. How, how do you know Judaism was the, was the right path? Uh, I did some exploration in the sense that I would always talk to people who are religious. I was raised very religious, so I always ha- had an interest in religion. Then I basically left it in my teens and just started talking to people and trying to understand different points of view. Never thought I'd go back to being religious. And uh, and then just the profound truth of uh, Judaism as a step-by-step detailed system for making a better world is what uh, profoundly moved me. Um, you said you were born Seventh-day Adventist. They're Christians, I, I, that much I know. Yes. Uh, so you reject the story of Christ? You, do you believe Christ was a man? Do you believe... I mean, Christ, after all, in the Christ of the New Testament is, uh, was a Jew. Uh, was a rabbi. Yeah, well, so was Karl Marx was a Jew, too, and I, you know, I, I, I'm no longer into communism, though I did have a flirtation with it for a couple of years. Um, no, I, 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 uh, I think it's nonsense. Uh, the, the, the unique beliefs of Christianity don't make uh, any sense to me whatsoever. I was raised with them, and I can't stand them. You mean the idea of a virgin birth and the idea of water into wine and transubstantiation, all, all that is what bothers you? Well, yeah, that bothers me, but not nearly as much as the, the fundamental belief of Christianity, which is not belief in Jesus, really. It's belief that what you believe is more important than what you do. I just find that so repellent on, on every different level, the notion that... that you know, some mass murderer could uh, Repent, ask God for forgiveness, yeah. and, and then he'd be forgiven of all his sins. Again, I find that absolutely morally repellent. Mm-hmm. And so these fundamental distinguishing characteristics of Christianity I find repellent. Mm. Uh, but there's a place for forgiveness, right? Yeah, there is a place for forgiveness, but just because, you know, after you've murdered a bunch of people and then suddenly, you know, you go to God and say, oh, I'm sorry, I don't buy it, and I don't believe that. You know, mass murderers, just because they do some kind of deathbed confession, um, you know, get off. And, and uh, like the Judaism holds that if you hurt someone, God can't forgive you. You have to get forgiveness from the person you hurt. So that's very different from the Christian idea of you just, you know, go to Jesus. And, uh, I mean, I just find that morally repugnant. Do you believe in heaven and hell and the devil and that kind of stuff? I, I don't believe in the devil, and, and Judaism doesn't believe in, in, you know, any being with... Uh, supernatural power outside of God, but I, I, I do believe in reward and punishment, which is the, the language that the Jews use more than... But than Jews talk hell. about reward and punishment here on earth, not, a, not, a, not in heaven and not deep in the pits of uh, the core of the earth, the hot magma of the earth. Uh, I think that's actually a misconception. If you go to the Encyclopedia Judaica, which is the, the crowning work of secular Jewish scholarship in the last 50 years, 